Hi, I'm Dave Painter, the Reserve Manager here at Slimbridge. Out in the rain again, we're just south of the South Finger at the moment. One of our water controls here behind me, which will form the, the backdrop of this week's Wildlife Weekly. Okay, we'll be looking at a number of themes this week, but I think the overriding thing is going to be the, the breeding bird stories. We're going to have updates on the cranes, uh, on our kingfishers just behind us here, news about the first um, flamingos, but really it's the downy ducklings which are, are really dominating uh, at the moment. One of the main um, management controls for us is water level and you can see one of our water control structures here, several of these scattered throughout the reserve. These ones are affecting the water levels out on the top and bottom new piece behind us here. If you've been in the Zeiss Hyde, you will have seen the, the wetlands there, uh, the water levels being controlled by this, uh, uh, this control here. So an important part of our daily work is actually checking those water levels the cranes. Lots and lots of visitors coming in, watching them from the Martin Smith High, getting great views. Here's Nigel Jarrett, the, the head of our conservation breeding unit. He'll explain a little bit more about how the, the cranes are, uh, are taught to react to, uh, to foxes. Now, in order to prepare them for life in the wild, we have to teach them or train them somehow to avoid foxes. And we do that by exposing them to a, a, a dog that looks like a fox. And we give them a big fright at the same time as introducing this foxy dog to them. We're very lucky to have a member of staff, Tanya Grigg, who actually has won Crufts with her well-trained Nova Scotia duck hauling retriever, a dog called Teal, who is very mild-mannered and very well-behaved. What Tanya does is take the dog on a lead into the enclosure where we are rearing the chicks when they're aged about eight or nine weeks, just, just at the time they begin to fly. And at the same time that the dog appears with Tanya, the, the people who are rearing the cranes play an alarm call, raise their artificial heads in an alert posture, and then literally leg it across the uh, enclosure, sometimes flapping their arms, making it seem like they're trying to fly away from this predator. Very lucky to have Tanya and her dog, and so far um, she, it, it's worked. We're able to release the cranes in Somerset and they're able to avoid foxes when they're very young. What we can't actually do is train them how to avoid foxes when they've got babies, but Chris and Monty seem more than able to do that, and we saw some fantastic evidence of that this week. James Leeds was present. Middle of the afternoon, a fox actually attacked um, the, two, the two babies, or it was, it was looking like it was, going to, like it was going to attack the two babies, and Chris and Monty were able to shoo it off, chasing with full-on aggression, flapping their wings, um, and, and calling loudly until the fox disappeared. Unfortunately, and this is um, r really quite upsetting for a lot of us, a, a fox came back last night and, and took a, ch a chick from the place where Chris and Monty keep, keep the babies warm each night. Uh, it happened at about half past eight, and what we saw on the webcam was a, a fox actually coming through the rushes, quick, quickly nipped in towards the nest, gave Chris and Monty an almighty shock. They jumped up, flap, flapped the wings, did try and see it off, but unfortunately the deed was done. Um, and although the commotion at the brood site, brooding site died down after half an hour, um, it wasn't until this morning that when we, just, when we saw just one chick with Chris and Monty that we realized that the, the fox had actually won this encounter and had taken one of the babies. Whilst the loss of a chick was devastating for us, Chris and Monty have actually carried on as normal um, and we hope and are, are sure that they would have learned from this encounter. We have everything crossed that Chris and Monty are now going to be able to focus all of the feeding and care that they can both deliver to this one chick and that it will survive and that it will fledge at about 70 days, nine weeks or so from now. Well, sticking with the breeding bird theme, 
as predicted, the, the ducklings have been absolutely fantastic. Shell duck especially, more and more broods emerging now. We've got some good footage of those, of the families being, um, uh, being brooded and big families uh, around the place as well. Lots of other youngsters around, um, young geese, young flamingo you might uh, watch out for as well. And of course, we're right in the middle of our downy duckling week. And this is a, a fantastic opportunity to have a, a look behind the scenes here and watch the, uh, the captive ducklings as, or eggs as they're, they're incubated, hatched, and the ducklings as they're, uh, as they're reared uh, in, in close quarters. If you get the chance, do come along to one of the downy duckling sessions. It really is a, a fantastic experience. Not just the waterfowl though that are, that are breeding. We did capture this rather quirky nest site for a, a blue tit near, uh, quite appropriately, Welly Bootland. Blue tits, of course, are whole nesters. They're looking for, for cavities to nest in. They do have a bit of a, a track record for, for finding these rather unusual um, nest sites, but we've been able to watch this bird going in and out of the, the welly, pinned to the, um, uh, the fence there at Welly Bootland. As you approach the, uh, the site, watch out for it up on one of the, uh, one of the posts. It's a great little addition to uh, the kids' day in Welly Bootland. I've got to mention the, uh, the kingfishers looking up towards the kingfisher hide here um, behind us. Lots of activity in the week, loads of feeding, lots of people got to see some really good views of them, but it's suddenly gone very quiet. Those youngsters have fledged and they've dispersed and now it's going to be a fairly quiet time while the adults prospect for a new nest site before they get down to laying, hopefully, uh, a second clutch. Hopefully, back here at the kingfisher hide. Uh, so lots going to be going on this week. Uh, as I say, do please keep up to date. Visit the, uh, the website, uh, watch out there. And also remember to visit our YouTube channel as well.